We understand the importance of um, Qur'an and the other revealed texts. Now, what other Islamic Muslim sources are there that, that Muslims... I mean, obviously, the, the Qur'an is, is the top, is the absolute um, revelation that we believe in, but what are some of the other script sources that Muslims um, read, follow, and, and help to, to live their lives? The other source that Muslims depend upon and turn back to and follow is what is known as the hadith. Now literally the word hadith means speech. You know, we're having a hadith here. But when we're talking about hadith in the context of Islam, we're talking about the words, the gems, the actions of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. So anything that Prophet Muhammad said, anything he did, Anything he gave his tacit approval of and anything to do with his character and appearance, this is the hadith. Another uh, synonymous term that is used is sunnah. And the word sunnah means, linguistically means way. But when we're talking about it within the Islamic context, we're talking about the way of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. This is the second primary source that the Muslims refer to. So there are collections out there, books, that encapsulate his way of life. So for example, the Qur'an says, pray. But how do you pray? The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, pray as you have seen me praying. So there are certain words, phrases, actions, which we do emulating the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, which are found in the hadith in these volumes, whereby there are Muslims who are actually collecting uh, these gems. And, and, and just after his death, peace be upon him, there are Muslims who are going to and, and establishing contact with those that establish contact with him and learning from them what they learnt from him. So how do Muslims know that the, the words and the phrases and the actions that are collected in these um, volumes of hadith, how do Muslims know that these are accurate, that these are real? What is the basis by which they know that they are authentic? In Islam, we have... Uh, a science dedicated to studying the authenticity of these. So we have uh, what we call a chain of narration. So Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said something. And a man, a companion, by the name of Omar, he heard this from the Prophet, peace be upon him. And then another man who... Uh, took this piece of information from Umar, passed it on to another man, until it came to this person, to a Muslim, who is compiling all of these you know, sayings and actions. But what he would do, for example, he had a checklist. There are conditions. And what these conditions do is they check the authenticity by looking at the individual's who carried on this piece of information. So was he trustworthy? Was he honest? Did he, was he ever known to have lied? When did he find out this information and, and he recorded it? Was he insane at one point or another? Is there any missing links? Did this person here actually meet this person here? And there is a, a science. They would work out through this science whether a piece of information is authentic or not. So it sounds a little bit like an investigation of, you know, beyond reasonable doubt. You know, we've, we've proven this and we've got all the different witnesses and elements so we can, you know, say beyond reasonable doubt these are genuine sayings. Muslims are not biased. I mean, there are actually volumes of books which contain hadith, prophetic tradition, which are weak which are fabricated that Muslims wrote. They said, 
after study and research and analysis, we can see that these words and actions attributed to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, are not true. Or they are questionable. Why? Because there's a problem with this narrator here. There's a problem with this transmission, this chain of transmission. There's a cut somewhere. It's very easy to work out fabricated, made up traditions. So what you're saying is that there can in fact be hadith which may be very, very favorable to a Muslim to read it. You say, SubhanAllah, if this is true, this will help me a lot. But because the science has established that it's not genuine, we can't accept it. We can't say this is a reason, this is a justification because its chain is not strong. This is well, there's a great deal of authentic tradition that we can embrace and we can work with and we, don't, we do not, therefore, we do not uh, practice or implement anything that is weak. Anything that cannot be backed up by the Qur'an or by the, the, the sayings or the authentic sayings of Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. So can a person say, I'm a Muslim and I believe in the Qur'an but I don't follow the Sunnah, I don't believe the Hadith? Can they say, well, the Qur'an is revealed, it is, it is glorious, it is immortal, therefore I'll follow that and I don't need these other things? Is that possible as a Muslim or do the two have to work in combination? They work hand in hand. So, Allah says, the one who believes in the Qur'an believes in all of the Qur'an, doesn't pick and choose. Because we've, if we've established that this is the Word of God and we know that God Almighty is all wise, so anything that is legislated by God must contain wisdom. Whether we know the wisdom or not, we say we submit. And that's what going back to that term, Islam. We're submitting our, our will and our interpretation. We just submit. We say, if God has revealed this, there must be good in it. So God is telling us in the Quran, we must also follow in the example of Prophet Muhammad. Because he is the one that is uh, showing us how to practice the Qur'an. So, in actual fact, if we sent a person out into the middle of the desert, and we sent him out with the Qur'an, and we said to him, worship God, worship Allah. The Qur'an says you have to pray, you have to give zakah, alms, alms due, you have to fast, you have to uh, uh, do certain rituals. That's all it says. Now, I send another person out to the desert and we give him the hadith. We give him knowledge of how the Prophet did things. Now, which one do you think is going to be able to worship Allah better? The one with the hadith. Why? Because the hadith is practicing the Qur'an. It's the practice. It's how to do things. Whereas the Qur'an is the theory, the hadith is the practice.